Welcome back to our Future 101 podcast. And today in our CSOT headquarters, we've got uh, a special guest, Matt. So Matt, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Thanks, Andre. I, uh, so yeah, my name is Matt Zunek. I uh, was a first year civil engineering student at the University of Toronto. I, uh, I've been involved with CSUN since early on, about September. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, met, I met Josephine at PPC rally right before the election. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of I've attended lots of the Change My Mind events mm -hmm. on campus and uh, getting more involved. Cool. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your university experience as a first year. This was your first time out of high school and uh, being involved in something uh, in the post-secondary institution. So oh, tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. No, so um, yeah, so I, I went to class. So I was, I was in engineering, so it was mostly in person um, as opposed to other programs where it was uh, basically all online. Uh, so I attended class uh, September, October, October, November, mm -hmm. and uh, no problems. I made lots of friends, went to my midterms, all of that. And um, I was doing pretty well in the classes. <laughs> and, uh, and then mid-October-ish, they um, found out that I didn't submit any of my vaccination documents. So I uh, kind of panicked and submitted an exemption request, a religious exemption request. And uh, obviously, same as everyone else, it got denied. And mm -hmm. I was deregistered de mid-November-ish. Um, yeah, yeah. So they took my money and... Uh, uh, yeah. They took... So you never got a refund? Never got a refund, yeah. So they, um, they deregistered me, said I can't come to class anymore, and said uh, the tuition refund schedule applies, right? Basically saying, if you wanted your money back, you should have withdrawn from your classes way back in September. Right. <laughs> so they deregistered me in November and then say you should have thought ahead, right? Okay, Even. so let me get this straight. So you, uh, you register for the courses with the assumption that they were not going to require the vaccination uh, yeah, yeah. The documents, right? So originally when you're registering for the stuff and you're paying for it, there was no mention of, okay, this is going to be mandated. They maybe were talking about it, but it wasn't mandated at the time. Yeah. And then halfway through your contract, they just changed the terms on you and said, hey, if you if you want to continue, this is what you have to do now. Yeah, yeah, basically. So um, the, the timeline was kind of, uh, so back back in, I don't know, what, January when I first applied, uh, like, like January of grade 12, when I first applied, right, there was no mention of anything that, the vaccines weren't even, weren't even out by then. Yeah. Um, I got accepted around May, um, still no mention of that. I uh, accepted my offer, Paid my tuition around late August. There was talk of the, the vaccine mandate, but around then, at that time, it was a get vaccinated or do test, two tests a week, mm -hmm. right? So there was those two options, I guess, right? Which is still, I don't want to do tests, but it's at least I can go to school. Um, and then as, as time went on, I, did, I didn't submit anything for the original deadline of like September, early September, uh, I forgot the date. Um, but as time went on, it, it became clear that like, they weren't, I don't know, it, it was either like, it needs to be a approved exemption request or the two doses, right? Right. Um, and it's hard to get a, a, they didn't give any approved exemption requests. Yeah, you, so you apply for the exemption and it's up for their uh, interpretation, right? Um, so which is, yeah. The university legally stole money from you. They legally stole, yeah, well. Yeah, Legal exactly. theft. Yeah, so yeah, I, I paid the money and they, they gave me the, uh, uh, they accepted me into the program, I gave them the money, and in that it was a contractual agreement for them to yeah. give me a service, yeah. right? And I didn't do anything out of the ordinary, right? But then they yeah. Took, yeah, kicked me out of classes. You right? didn't violate the terms of your side of the agreement, but they violated their terms. Precisely, yeah. And because they did not provide you a service and they kicked you out of the program, even though you paid for it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's uh, unfortunate, and that's what lots of students are feeling now, right? That's, that's the same sort of situation. So is there any way you can get the money back through court, the legal system? Um, currently now, the way that we're planning on going, me and my, uh, my family, we're going to go, yeah, small claims court. Um, it's 8000 uh, 
to to just uh, submit. Well, no, so it's it, that's the tuition that I need that I need back. Oh right. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so eight thousand dollars. It's more expensive. It's a more expensive program for engineering, right? Yes. Um, so that's just the one term. Um, yeah, but it's small small claim score. It's an easy, uh, hopefully, just a breach of contract. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, case. Yeah, well, hopefully you get your money back because otherwise that's that is theft and uh, <laughs> they're just violating the terms of the contract. So. Um, I really hope you get that back. But in general, I mean, you went to class in person, and uh, w what was it like? Tell me about your experience in the classroom. Um, tell me about your professors, your peers. Yeah. What were their feelings towards, you know, lockdowns, the mandates? What was that all about? Well, so yeah, um, I made lots of friends. So my professors, uh, I was an engineer, so it's it's different than like poli sci or like any of those humanities mm -hmm. like the humanities or something where like calculus they don't really talk about i don't know right. their opinions on all this stuff but um all my teachers were i had my mask below my nose all the time right and all my, all my professors they, they they taught the class they didn't really stop the class or whatever except for my calculus teacher who would consistently be like they, she would stop the class and say mask check right pull it up over your nose mask um, check yeah all the time it um, but yeah, so all like the lots of the, uh, my peers, other classmates, um, the friends I made, we would study together in the library. Everyone would take their masks off. They, no one liked wearing the masks. Um, I did get the feeling that everyone was kind of, lots of people were on board with the whole vaccine mandate. No one really thought too much about it. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of feeling you get when you are, like when we're on campus for the change of online events. Um, and lots of people are just kind of unaware. Um, of the situation lots of the, like people like me are in, right? Um, it's, um, they're kind of going by their own, lots of people got vaccinated, just, it's, it's the, the university said I have to get vaccinated, so I'll get vaccinated, and didn't really think much of it, right? right? Especially in engineering, I, well, I, I don't know, any program you might find the same sort of people, but they, uh, yeah, it's just whatever the university tells them, right? It's, uh, right. Don't, so don't stand out of the crowd. Um, yeah, no one wants to take the same stance on this. Yes, so even though they do, they might not have done it out of their own will, mm -hmm. they still do it and they still submit to the system because they don't want to stand out and they want to continue their education and they want to continue to function in society. And that is basically you have to pay a ransom in order to get just basic human rights back. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's bottom line, it's coercion. Right. Right. Um, even if even if you even if you're okay with it, like even if lots of the students are like, yeah, that's, I don't have a problem with this. If it is the condition of get vaccinated to go to school or get vaccinated to go to a restaurant and go to get vaccinated to keep a job, whatever it is, it's still coercion, right? Like uh, we need the there's that principle of the free and informed consent, right? Yeah. Like the two aspects of it: free consent and informed consent, right? Lots of people aren't even informed of the. Well, this is this isn't the main issue here. Like, yeah. we're not pro or anti-vax, right? But lots of the issues around, lots of the information around the vaccine is censored, or it's yeah. only the one side of it, right? Um, well, we have yeah. plenty of members uh, at CSUNT who um, who are vaxxed and exactly. who who are pro-vaccination, yeah. but they're against the mandates, and exactly. that's the point here: is that we're not against the we're not against the vaccinations. If you want to get it for your own health and you feel like you're you're going to be protected and you've assessed the benefits and uh, and the risks with it, yeah. then then go ahead and get it and uh, show it off and if it's your choice, yeah, exactly. right? But when when you don't want to do it and you're only doing it to get back into society, then that's the wrong reason to do it because your rights are not given to you by the institution or by the government. Your yeah. rights are given to you because you're a citizen of this country. And yes, it is uh, amazing that you're a citizen of this country and you're much luckier than a lot of the other places on earth. But at least at this point, that's, that's the way society is going, is that we have to pay ransom to get our basic human rights back. And that's something that we're fighting against, that we are against the mandates, not against the vaccines in general. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, going back to how I applied for my exemption, right? Yeah, so let's um, talk about that. Let's talk about that. Um, so I got, a, I got an email from the registrar 
around mid-October saying, uh, submit your documents. Like, and you have until October, end of October, I forget, I forget the day, um, to submit the documents or, I forgot, I forgot the exact wording, but it was kind of like, or else something, right? Like a threat. Like a th oh, basically a threat, but it was, yeah, it was like, submit the documents. We don't have the documents on record. So I, I submitted um, an exemption request. I shouldn't have. Because, yeah, basically it's, it's saying, oh, I have human rights, but the university has to grant me my human rights. You're asking permission for it, right? And it's so demeaning um, and, like, like undignified. Like, I, I feel like, uh, um, I don't know the word, like, it's just kind of... It just took, they take all your power away. No, all my power away, yeah. Um, where it's like, here, almighty university, grant me my rights. <laughs> um, even though the way it should be is, well, the way it should be is the university shouldn't even know if you're vaccinated or not. Mm -hmm. But through the exemption process, if you are to argue the legitimacy of it, it's like, it should just be, I request an exemption and they should grant the exemption. But then again, it's still, they shouldn't even know if you're vaccinated or not. It's private medical information. It shouldn't matter, yep. bottom line, right? Um, but yeah, I, I, I submitted the exemption. They sent me a generic response back saying it's denied. Um, and there was a part in there where it said, um, paraphrasing, I don't know the exact wording again. It's, it was basically, even if it could, it could be found that your exemption request um, uh, expresses your human rights. Um, it is our view that the overriding health and safety concerns of the vaccine mandate um, overrides your human rights, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, it's basically saying the vaccine requirement overrides whatever human rights you might have, which like flat out and simple, they don't care about your human rights. Um, and uh, so I got that and I submitted an appeal, um, more information, some letters from bishops and, and whatnot, uh, saying like, like re re reiterating my position on the exemption request. Mm -hmm. And I got just a flat out response back saying, I know this isn't the decision you like, but we're not prepared to change our position on this. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, it's, uh, they aren't willing to listen. Yeah, well, so here's uh, a clear example to all of our viewers who are watching this and thinking that exemptions is the way out of this. Yeah. This is a, a, a live example of a person who submitted an exemption, got denied, submitted, uh, trying to resubmit the exemption and trying to reapply, got denied mm -hmm. again because they don't give a fuck. They don't care about you. They don't They're care good. about your human rights. All they care about is making the big bucks and uh, being a good business, basically. But they are going to exclude parts of the community, like students like you, who just don't want to submit. They want to live without it. They want to yeah. not disclose their private medical information. And quite frankly, it is not the way to go if you're going to submit exemptions because they get denied, first of all. And second of all, you are handing all the power to the government. You're handing all the power to the institution that decides your future. It's basically up to them to say, oh, yeah, you can have a future and study here, or, oh, no, you can't have a future because I said so. And that's pretty much the reason they're providing. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I declared that we're more important than your issues. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's troubling to, to see it, especially from a university, um, especially like the University of Toronto. It's such a high prestigious, prestigious institution, right? Um, where it should be a place where freedom of thought, and even in their institutional purpose, Right, where freedom of thought and uh, mm -hmm. um, expression, whatnot, is encouraged. Right, like it's a university. Like it's a university. People should have different opinions and discussion about it, rather than just a brick wall of get vaccinated or get kicked out. Right. Exactly. Yes. And um, while I agree with that, the university's purpose is to conduct research yeah. and to provide a platform for freedom of speech and freedom. Yeah of expression to flourish yeah. among all members. So the, just the fact that they excluded you and they discriminated against you and uh, so many other students that are part of the community, that just shows they don't, they don't give a shit about their mission statement anymore. That does not apply because other things yeah. are important. So they're not, they're not following their mission because in their mission statement, it's, we, we went over in previous podcast where it states that 
the most fundamental of all rights is the right to freedom of speech and that is what they should uphold yeah that's what all the professors should uphold and you would think that in times of trouble like this you would have the only place that would be talking about a counter argument would be the university that is their whole job that's their whole <laughs> job yeah they should they should be the ones promoting the the science right it's science is repeated over and over again right and even that's the science of the vaccines, right? But even like, yeah, freedom of uh, expression of different opinions on the mandate, mm -hmm. vaccines, the man like the lockdowns, whatnot, but it's all just stifled, right? Uh, censored one side, but then the other side is, yeah, forced, right? Um, yeah, and uh, censorship is the opposite of freedom of speech. <laughs> it is exactly the opposite of freedom of speech. But that just shows how afraid they are. They're, they're afraid because if they are 100% correct, yeah. right? Let's just assume that, okay, the university is correct about this and everything they say is the right thing to do. Then why are you so afraid to hear me speak? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if I'm so wrong, let me speak and let me make a fool of myself, right? Yeah. But they're not going to allow you because they know that whatever yeah. you speak is the truth. Whatever yeah. you speak is actually the right thing to do yeah. or it might counter their narrative. And so they want this thing going, and this is why they're not letting you speak. They're censoring you. They deregister you. Mm -hmm. There's uh, um, faculty, staff, professors who have spoken out against this, and very yeah. credible professors too, who are in the science, and they are, yeah. you know, ethics professors, and uh, all of those people. They've spoken out. They said, "Hey, this is wrong. This should not be happening." But no, no, no. Their opinions don't matter because science. Well, not only do their opinions not matter, but those are the professors that are losing tenureship, right, and being fired and, yeah, yeah. Well, whatnot just because of their opinion on that. Um, their career is yeah. just destroyed. And, like, some of them are being threatened with uh, loss of pension, too, right? Um, oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I haven't heard about that. Well, yeah. I, I don't know, like, all of the, but, yeah, some, some, some universities are threatening. I wouldn't be surprised um, if that's the case, yeah. That's the thing, yeah. Um, it's just totally ludicrous, mm -hmm. totally absurd. Um, but yeah, so uh, going on to what other experience I had at the university, right? I yeah. I went to class, and then near the end of the um, of the term, it was the beginning of December. I went to my calculus class um, without a mask, right? I showed up about halfway through. Um, I, I got I showed up late, but I went to learn, right? This was after I was deregistered, right? And I. I still pay, like I still didn't get, didn't get my money back, so I wanted to still go to class. Uh, I went and uh, well, the way I went without a mask this time because I w wanted to express my medical exemption to masks. All right, and um, the you know the professor, I walked in. The professor said mask check, right? As she usually does, and then she said I said I have an exemption for the mask, and she said uh, I'm gonna end the class here. This is an unsafe environment. Um, like everyone leave, right? Because I didn't want to leave, right? So then I said, no, like let the class keep on going. I don't want to, like, if, if you're going to do this, like I don't want to ruin the class for everyone else. Everyone's here to learn. So I left. I was only there for about a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so I left and at the end of class, I, I came back, um, talked it over with the, with the, professor, the professor, like respectfully. Um, I uh, expressed, again, that I have a medical exemption to the mask uh, and the university's policy on masks, right, where exemptions need to be honored. Um, and that conversation went on. Later that day, I got a, I got a call from the campus security. Um, I got an email from the vice provost, Sandy Walsh. <laughs> I got an email from uh, uh, registrar, engineering. Um, that was all that, that, that same afternoon, um, basically saying, yeah, like, you were, you were there on, on, on campus after being told not to. What were you doing there? Um, the next day I got an email from the dean. Like, he opened an investigation into me under the, the code of student conduct. Um, so basically they, what they alleged was I, I was there after being told not to, which is fair, right? Okay, I'll, I'll get into that, right? So I, I, they did tell me I can't go, I can't go to class. Uh, I, can't, I can't go to campus. And I went to, camp to campus, but there's more to the story, mm -hmm. right? Right. And the other thing was they said I um, 
threatened. Well, this is this is the wording of the charge, the charge or the uh, section of the uh, code of student conduct. But I threatened bodily harm or uh, violence on people, um, basically wow. by being there unvaccinated. They 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 really um, believe that me as an unvaccinated individual, I'm a threat to people, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's as far as like how far they're going with this. Um, even though it is proven that, well, vaccines don't reduce the transmission of the virus, so what's the difference? Like, I, they have no proof that I had COVID. I felt fine. Yeah. So treat me like I'm fine, right? Treat me like I'm healthy. Um, but yeah, so that investigation is going on. I can't give too many details of that, but I, I submitted a whole, a whole document to the dean. But the, the great thing about this investigation is basically that up until now, I've had a brick wall against the uh, administration team, mm -hmm. right? Sending emails and then it's kind of just kind of generic responses or no response at all. But now with this investigation, it's, it's awesome because um, the dean opened this investigation. So basically he has to review and acknowledge, respond to any information that he is given. Um, so I had the opportunity to submit a whole document. Um, it's like almost 18, 18 pages. <laughs> so he brought this upon himself, I guess. But I want him to be aware of the situation that I'm in, what the university is doing to me. Um, and I went through all of it, right? How I applied for an exemption. I tried to work within the university, university's policy, but it's fallen, fell on deaf ears. I, I feel like I'm being treated unfairly, right? I'm the victim in the situation. So I paid my money, contractual agreement, and then the university just says, screw off, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there's so many aspects to this. I even went over the, the presumption of innocence, as you might call it. Or it's basically what I was saying, right? If I feel healthy, I feel fine. Why do you treat me like I'm sick? Right? Why do you treat me like I'm a, like I'm a virus itself? Yeah. Or I'm still a student. I pay my money. I'm, I have a right to be there in class. So don't say like I have was posed a threat to everybody. Um, so yeah, that's basically. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back because you mentioned that you did go to class for the first couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, that was with the mask on. Uh, you just wanted to get an education and this is why you were complying at the time. Yeah. But eventually once you learned that this is all bullshit and they de-enrolled you, you just uh, decided to take off the mask and show publicly, hey, I'm not a, I'm not for this. Yeah. Who's with me? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's sort of, yeah. So, so what made yeah. you decide to, to go for that and uh, finally take off your mask and say, screw this? Well, yeah, so, so the thing is I, I did want to keep on going to class. Right, and that's that's bottom line. I wanted to continue. Right, um, with taking off the mask, I realized I do have an exemption mm -hmm. based on the guidelines and the policies and all that. I, I do have an exemption for the masks under the policy or under the all those reopening right? Act of Ontario. Re reopening Act of Ontario. It's not a it's not a not like illegitimate mask yeah. exemption, right? So I I expressed that um, I just wanted to kind of be seen. I wanted the university to know that I'm still going to class. Um, and that was just a way of kind of sticking my head out. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I went to class for the first three months and it was all good and dandy. The university, they, they, they were just sending me these threats and these emails. Um, almost like they, they kind of assumed that I wasn't going to class, I was following along. Um, but then now they definitively knew that I was going to class. Right, and it, it's, it proves the point, right? It, it, it shows that I am here to fight, right? I am here to, they, can't get, they can't get away with that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I have a right to be there, so. Right, so, so you decided uh, to do it to um, show to the university that I'm not compliant. I fucking want my service. Exactly. And I want it the way I want it because that's what I deserve. Yeah. I don't deserve to be treated like I'm ill. I yeah. don't deserve to be treated like I'm a second class citizen. So I refuse to be invisible. And that's what we that's what we stand for at CISO. And you fit perfectly right in <laughs> with our philosophy. Yeah. Um, because you just uh, you said enough is enough. This is my this is where I put my line in the sand. Yeah. And this is where I make a stance. And you did. And the university obviously didn't like that. I mean your vaccination status did not change from September to now. And um, it's not like you were a threat before, nor you were a threat yeah. after. It's not like yeah. the whole class got sick and everybody died, like in a real pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So 
what is what it's all about it's they are just pissed off at you that you're not compliant it's not about the health and the safety That's exactly because if it was about health and safety then everybody would be vaccinated nobody would be allowed to go in there's no exemptions there's nothing going on right yeah. it's just you're either in or you're out and that would be the case but it's not because you still went to class mm -hmm. and you didn't get everybody sick you weren't sick yourself and so <laughs> it just proves the point that it's not about the safety and uh, the safety of the public or whatever their their um, uh, idea is yeah. it's all about compliance and when you visibly show you take off the mask you visibly show hey look i'm not compliant what are you going to do about it then exactly. that's what really gets them that's when they start you know expelling you and start investigations and and this is like university's money they're pulling in money instead of putting it in research and development and bettering our society and promoting conversation and science they would rather put money into expelling a student or investigating a student who's yeah. just a com normal citizen who just wants to study and be yeah. a normal kid going to class you said you're doing well in your classes and you were going to be an engineer and contribute to society in a in a good manner yeah but they they want just want to stifle that because yeah it is about compliance not about the health and safety of it um because you've you've, you've gone over the um uh, Kieran Moore's directions to the universities and colleges, I guess. That was posted on the Instagram page, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in that, it, it kind of, it, it went over and it said that basically, like, do whatever you can to, like, do to the best of your abilities, keep the students in class, right, to the fullest extent possible. Um, but yeah, the universities all took the hard stance and just, like, said that vaccination is the most important thing here. Um, yeah. Or the compliance to the vaccination policy, right? Um, there's, there's no, no exemptions, no nothing, um, no. This is like, it's not, a, it's not a good uh, other option. But I'm saying, um, there's, there wasn't even an, an online option for me, mm -hmm. right? It's not. I wouldn't prefer, like, I, I wouldn't prefer that. But it would be at least something to keep me, to keep you going, going right? Yeah. Um, but they didn't even offer that. Right, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's um, totally they want to make an example out of me, almost. Right. Yeah, it's like, well, so what they really did to you, and they did it publicly in front of everybody, especially yeah. the teacher, your calculus teacher, who just told everybody to leave. Yeah. Because yeah. it's unsafe environment. I mean, fuck, those students are gonna go and party that same night, and they're all gonna be together anyways. So what the fuck are you afraid of? Why yeah. are you afraid of one student who doesn't wear a mask? who is not vaccinated or doesn't disclose his vaccine, maybe you are vaccinated and you just don't disclose. Who knows? Who knows? That's not, I don't care. I don't want to know it whether is, you're vaccinated or not. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the whole premise is that those students don't care either because yeah. they're going to go and sit maskless in the library, like you said, yeah. and they're going to study and drink their coffee and everything is dandy and fine. But as soon as it's official grounds of the university that you're in front of everybody publicly that's yeah. when they get pissed off at you and say oh it's unsafe environment i'm gonna die here yeah. but hey you're not dying in the library or when you eat at the same table in the cafeteria like we you know at our csun events we went inside uh u of t just last weekend yeah. or last week and uh we we went in the cafeteria of one of the colleges and there were just a bunch of students sitting there eating yeah. without masks. Obviously, you can't eat with a mask on. But COVID doesn't transmit. When but you know what? Eating. As soon as they're done eating, they're going to shove their mask back on and, yeah. and they will chat like that. But it's like, what's the point of it? <laughs> there's, there's what is no, the point? There's no critical thought there. Yeah. Where's the critical thinking? Where's yeah. the logic? It's yeah. all gone. It's all, yeah. yeah. But all, all along, none of, none of the uh, lockdowns or measures ever made logical sense. Mm -hmm. um, like yeah, when we when we saw the cases, I don't know like, when we saw the cases going down. Like it was back in uh, what last summer, or two summers ago now. We're on, we're on year two. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the COVID what happened started in March, supposedly, um, and then it went on. We didn't get the mask mandate until July, where cases yeah. were at all time low, right? Yeah. Like that's when that's when they mandated masks, and masks didn't stop being mandated all the way along. It's been a year and a half now. Right, mm -hmm. Ontario isn't it the only only place in the world where masks have been continuous the whole the whole pandemic? Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the science in that? Well, if um, we if we just compare it to 
um, even even just our southern neighbors. Mm-hmm. Like, we have a Super Bowl, seventy thousand fans <laughs> without a fucking mask on, and, and everybody's home, okay. It's not like everybody's gonna end up in the hospital the next day. That's yeah. just not what happens. That's not the reality. The reality is that everybody went in there. They they had their beers. They enjoyed their day, and they went home, and everybody was fine. Yeah. Right. And just across the border, a couple of miles north, you have students like you being kicked out and being publicly shamed for not wearing a mask because you are exempt. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's quite ridiculous just to see and do people, um, I mean, I'm baffled how people don't see, at least by now, I mean, I understand a year ago or two years ago when this whole thing was happening, but by now you should know, like, open your eyes look at what's going on around the world look at the stories you're watching on your instagram and the TikToks. Yeah. do you not see everybody's maskless do you not see everybody's just enjoying their life yeah. however we're here still where students your peers are not supporting you for just promoting these ideas they want to be back into normal i don't imagine they want to wear a mask for the rest of their life or i don't imagine they want to you know, get medical treatments that the government tells them for the rest of their life, or at least disclose it. Yeah. So why are we still in this situation? Why is Ontario and the rest of Canada still doing this bullshit? Well, yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, it goes further than just the universities. It's, yeah, the Ontario measures, Mm -hmm. Justin Trudeau's measures, right? That's hot and a hot topic right now. Yeah. All right. The um, truckers, right? Trucks, truckers are in their like isolated, um, truck cab right for like 22 up to 22 hours a day all alone but yet they need to be vaccinated right? <laughs> even though it's proven scientifically it doesn't reduce tra- the transmission of the virus mm-hmm. so what's the it's like there's the science quote unquote is the most anti-science thing there is right yeah. where they totally stifle one side of the conversation and then the other side makes no sense um yeah. It's just you got to open your eyes, right? And then, like, be informed. Well, uh, that, that's the thing. That's what we have to do at, uh, at yeah. CSUNT by, with our Changing, changing my, um, my Mind events yeah. that we do on campuses. Is we, we go and uh, speak with students and tell them what's going on. And 80% of the time, it's like, oh, wow, I had no idea. Like, that's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry you got, you know, deregistered. They don't fucking know. They have yeah. no idea because... They've just been loyal, compliant citizens that go along with everything. Yeah. And they don't question the, the implications that it has for their future because yeah. they, they have no idea what's coming for them if they continue to do what's, what they're doing and complying with all the mandates and complying with all the things that are happening. And so we are, we're at a question here is how do we pull our society out of this and how do we get to the point where we live the way we want to live and not the way we're told? Yeah, yeah. We gotta live uh, free. Uh, that's Canada, right? Strong and free. Mm-hmm. Um, but what? Well, that's what it should be, right? That's China. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's what we used to stand for. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 just it's frustrating. I don't know. And, mm-hmm. and that's happening right as I'm becoming like. We're all young. We're all young, like young adults as we were entering the world that's a rude awakening it is right and and that's uh, another point here is uh, everybody should take responsibility for their own life and that's what we we haven't seen in the past two years or even a couple of years leading up to the supposed pandemic is that people stop taking responsibility for for everything they yeah. would rather hand the responsibility to the government hand it over to uh, their parents are handed over to the institutions. Yeah. But that's the whole thing is you have to take responsibility for who you vote for. You have to watch the elections. You have to participate in society like a good citizen would. Yeah. And you have to know what you're doing. Is this the right thing that I am submitting medi- private medical information? Is it the right thing that I'm wearing a mask that doesn't fucking work? People have, yeah, people have too much trust in, well, yeah, they want to completely abdicate their own responsibility because mm-hmm. um, it's so much easier right short term it's yeah. so much easier to abdicate your responsibility and just go along with what the government tells you to do um, and for some reason they think by going along with it it'll it'll end right but th- if you think logic like if you just think about it for a second what kind of oppressive government would say oh 
Like if, if you if you comply with all the government's mandates and stuff, what kind of government would say, oh, they're complying with all I'm, all I'm telling them to do? Let's let's ease off a little bit. <laughs> like let's let's get let's give the power like get rid of the power that we have. Mm -hmm. If it's so easy for them to do this, they they can just mandate and mandate and mandate and where does it end? Mm -hmm. um, that's we got to stand up before it gets too bad. I mean, it's already gone on for two years, but yeah. it's better to go on. It's better to stop now than never, right? Well, the, it seems like the government is acting in the uh, because they are in a place of authority. They do make they they call the shots, yeah. and so the government is acting in place of a bully. They're they're the ones who are bullying their citizens yeah. in the name of public health, although the threat is not real. Because, I mean, if it was real, then the people who are maskless would die. The people who are not vaccinated would die. Yeah. And uh, well, then everybody would, you wouldn't, if this was a real pandemic, you wouldn't have to force me to do these measures. Yeah. yeah. If this was a real pandemic, I would be the first one lining up to get the shot. I would be the first one wearing three masks because I want to protect myself. I don't want to die. I want to yeah. live my life. But because it's not a real pandemic, because these threats are not real, yeah. then we have citizens who are not compliant and they're okay, right? You're non-compliant. You're alive, you're well, you're healthy, yeah. and you're doing better than you, you were before, especially with the yeah. mental health. And uh, same thing with a lot of our members is we finally connected with like-minded people who got each other out of it because we're living freely. And that's the strange, the strange thing about this. I, um, we've all lost a ton of, like the last two years, we've lost a ton of stuff, right? Like our freedoms and whatnot, what our school, lots of our jobs. Um, when I was, so, if you think about it like that way, we're at the lowest point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but overall, we stood up for ourselves, stood up for our values, met a group, a group of like good, like-minded people. And really it is yeah, the best mentally and uh, that we have been, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good time. Um, you smile a lot. So that's I, a good I smile a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a happy guy. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. Um, yeah. What was I gonna say? So tell me yeah. about your CSON involvement. How you got involved, and why you decided to get involved with us, and why specifically us? Well, yeah. So back, it was before the election, the federal election, um, mm -hmm. September, like mid, mid September. Uh, I went to a PPC rally um, downtown Toronto, and uh, Josephine was there. She spoke. That's that's how I found out about. Uh, CSON. Josephine is our founder of uh, Concerned Students of Ontario. For those of uh, for the new viewers, good good to point out. Yeah, um, but yeah. So she she was there. I, I was off to the side doing some homework. Like I had a lot of homework. <laughs> um, I was falling behind, mm -hmm. and then I heard in the back. Uh, yeah, she was started speaking about students and stuff. So I stood up and listened. And afterward, I came. I went and spoke to her. Thomas also um, was there too. That's how he found out. Um, Thomas is another member. He's another member. Students of Ontario. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's so also a U of T student uh, or yeah. former U of T. Yeah, yeah, he's also yeah. a U of T student. Um, yeah, so that's what we found out. Uh, after that, I got involved. I went to a few change of mind events, and uh, kind of tumbled to there. Mm -hmm. We have our uh, yeah weekly gatherings where we kind of play board games and stuff. Yeah. That's, that's how we get, get to know each other. Gatherings, we, yeah. we have fun. We have a tight knit community of uh, strong individuals who do lots of work for the organization, and yeah. uh, we continue to thrive and we continue to grow. Uh, and so, why why did you decide specifically CSANT uh, was the right organization for you? Well, um, previously, to uh, I think it was yeah, like end of the summer or something. Uh, I saw. I found. I came across this open letter campaign from what they now they're now called Amity. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they're now called the Amity yeah, project. Projects, yeah, project Amity. Um, so yeah, I found an open letter campaign between that them and the University of Toronto, and so I signed up for the email like updates, and nothing came of that. <laughs> nothing happened. No, but yeah, then I came across CSON, and they seemed like a strong uh, group of. People that actually took did like took action, right? Um, yeah, by going out speaking to people, you, you actually see their see their presence. Um, but Amity, I don't know. Like I haven't heard anything about them 
Yes. Since then. So it seems um, like the organization likes to hide behind the screens and behind the emails and behind open letters and. That's the thing. If they are doing stuff behind the scenes, you don't hear about it. Mm -hmm. Right? They aren't making a difference. Um, but yeah, for us, it's um, yeah. We 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 you see us. You see our presence on campus. You see us talking to people, come up to us, right, and get involved. Um, like it, it really is a good tight knit community of. Uh, I, I like the people involved, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes, yeah. and so, I mean, just going back to what you mentioned about Amity, and, and quite frankly, a lot of the groups that are in this uh, freedom movement is, uh, is that our philosophies are different. Yeah. Our philosophy does not match with any of the other groups because uh, we do not go for exemptions. We do not do things like... Uh, you know, at letters and asking daddy government mm -hmm. to give us what we want or mommy institution, please let, let me uh, get back inside. That's not what we advocate for because that shit doesn't work. No. And so w what sucks about this is that those organizations are leading people in the wrong directions because they they believe in this stuff, right? They believe in the open letters and they believe that uh, legal system is going to get them out of it. Oh, because it's an easier path, right? People mm -hmm. always want to do less work to get what they want. And so they're going to go to their um, organizations like Amity and they're going to go to organizations um, like uh, Rebel News and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And what what's going to happen there is they're going to have this feeling that, oh, Julie Panessi is going to save me or right. this individual is going to save me. But that's the problem the here is the, the hero story yeah. is the heroes will not save you. The heroes yeah. are not there to save you. You have to save yourself. You have to do the work. You have to get involved. Yeah. You have to go on the ground, speak with students and change the narrative. But if you're just hiding behind the screens and you're thinking that your exemption is going to work out, well, it fucking won't. It won't <laughs> then work out for you. And that's why you're here now uh, joining the movement and getting mm -hmm. more involved and doing things to actually make a difference. Yeah. And it's so detrimental to the freedom movement that a lot of these people are obviously getting behind the heroes because they're yeah. popular and they think, oh, well, this is the path that it's going to work out, but it won't. And that's the problem because you have to take individual responsibility for yourself. Yeah. Don't give the responsibility to somebody else who is a celebrity or who is a hero because heroes will not get you out of this. You're not going to elect some magical politician that will make everything dandy. That's just not something that's realistic. The reality yeah. is you're going to have to take responsibility for your life and you'll have to get involved with an organization that supports that. Yeah, and yeah. this is exactly what we advocate here at CSUNT is uh, we wish these organizations did the things that we do. I mean, yeah. we would applaud them for it and we would actually support them. But the problem is that these organizations are hurting a lot of the movement because the movement is now swayed in a wrong direction it's totally yes yeah, split um, because a lot of those people i wish those people took their masks off but a lot of those people they're going to be against it behind the screens and behind their open yeah. letters and then they're going to put a mask on going to the grocery store oh yeah and the thing is not everyone's strong enough to like really stand up for them themselves right mm -hmm. so they do need kind of a group to make them i don't know stronger together um but yeah everyone needs to it kind of goes back to the same the same sort of premise of back to like during the lockdowns, right? We were told it's like, like I don't know. Um, everyone needs to do the part together, right? Um, but it's it's yeah, it's it's an individual responsibility for your own health. That's what it should be, right? Yeah. And you have an indiv individual choice to take the vaccine. So it should be. But and yeah, now you have an individual choice to take action for well your yeah. individual indiv individuality, right? Yes. Your, your freedom. Um, and everyone needs to take that, everyone needs to stand up individually to then come together as a collective. Right. Right. So you can't be told to stand up by a hero, right? You have to stand up for yourself and then we all come together and we're stronger that way. That's right. right? Yes. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. W what you're basically uh, mentioning is everybody will stand up as an individual yeah. and because there's so many individuals doing that, then it will make a huge yeah. impact on society. But when you're just sitting, you know, and you're still doing, you're still complying, you're still submitting your exemptions because exemption is a form yeah. of compliance. You're still complying. You're still wearing your mask. 
So nothing has changed as you as an individual because you're just hoping that your hero will save you. Right. Yeah, and yeah. of course, you're advocating for your hero. You donate the money to them and you hope that they're going to make the world all better. But that's yeah. not the reality because we need the mass. We need we need people to change and yeah. begin taking responsibility for their lives like they did decades ago. Right. Yeah. If, if the, the and that's the thing is that the state of your bank account is not the problem of uh, it's not racism or I mean, the state is going to come out and tell you, oh, the reason you're broke is because of rich white man or, you know, the reason you can't go to school. Well, that's uh, just racism. There's always that. Yeah, that thing you can attribute all your problems. But to. that's the thing, because it makes it easy for people and they say, oh, OK, well, I don't have to work anymore because uh, I'm already disadvantaged. Yeah. But you're not. Everybody, well, of course, everybody comes from a different uh, background, different socioeconomic status, mm -hmm. and we can't change anything about that. But, well, some people have to work more, some people less, and that's life. That's just the reality of life, yeah. and we cannot make everybody equal. And we're in a society, we live in a society, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, but, yeah, like, it, it's, um, yeah, you can't just attribute all your problems to some, like, distant, like, cause, right? Yeah. Um, same thing with the people that actually believe like, what the narrative is being pushed, right? We're still in a lockdown, we're still in COVID because the anti-vaxxers, right? They're spreading COVID, but what, that's, that's, not how it, that's not how it works. Like the science, right? The numbers show differently, right? And even then, it's, we're still in a, lo in a lockdown, we're still in COVID because the government says we are, mm -hmm. all right? So they shouldn't have that power. They shouldn't, yeah, it's, we've got to live our lives. The um, power is with us. Yeah. We, uh, we have to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take it back. We do have to take it back together. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, I mean, n n now recently you got more involved with CSANT and um, you were a little bit idle for, um, for, for a couple of months to start off with. Mm -hmm. But I mean, how come you decided to get involved and contribute more of your time and energy to it? Well, yeah, so, so now I'm, I'm getting more involved. Um, I don't know. The thing is, the thing about CSON is, um, it's a bit of a commitment, right? Well, it's not really that big of a commitment, but we're, we're all together. If we all commit together, um, I, gotta, I gotta stand up, we all have to stand up to um, take back our future, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, put in the effort now, so then later on, the, later on down the road, you don't have to put the effort in. Um, I'm, uh, I don't have a job right now, I don't have a school right now, I've got a lot of free time on my hands. Um, and this is a good cause to bring people together. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got involved as uh, an event coordinator. Event coordinator, yeah. And uh, so you will be planning events uh, in the Kitchener area. Kitchener, Kitchener, Waterloo area, um, like Western Ontario, like London area too. Mm -hmm. um, until we get someone, someone out there too. Yeah, because we're, yeah. we're province-wide organization, and we cannot mm -hmm. have one person organizing yeah. events all across the, the province so uh, we have a bit of a structure where um, we have leaders uh, all across the province organizing different events mm. and one leader supersedes all of them and kind of oversees what what things are going on and uh, you're one of the leaders at uh, Kitchener Waterloo and London yeah. area like you mentioned yeah yeah because right right now up, up till now it's really been really kind of centralized in, in Toronto mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as we, as we expand out, it's hard for like Western, like Western students to get involved yeah. with us when they're all the way out there or like, I don't know, Waterloo. We have a group in, in Ottawa, but that's like kind of separate from us. We can't really go back and forth to Ottawa yeah. all the time. But Well, that's the thing. Those students can also get involved. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a leader. Um, we have a group out there. Please join us yeah. and, uh, and get involved. Start a CSUN event there. Start uh, organizing yeah. social gatherings. You're all welcome to do it. You don't have to wait for us to do it. If uh, that's what you want, you can do that. Exactly, yeah. Just get involved. Send us a message to CSUN.ca and uh, we'll get in touch with you and, and chat with you all about what you want to contribute and how you want to change the course of our future. Basically, yeah. Uh, when you see us out at our change, change, change of mind events, whatnot, yeah, get in touch, get involved. Get involved, yeah. Yeah, it's a big province to cover, and we have a lot of uh, universities involved in uh, implementing these mandates. So we have uh, a lot of work to do. And uh, if you want this stuff to end early, you better get involved, and you 
got to start doing some work and take personal responsibility for that because the future is in your hands, not in your hero's hands or yeah. anybody else's. Mm -hmm. And so now tell me a little bit about your future, what you want to do and uh, what you want to pursue. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's always a tough question. But uh, yes, yeah, so like I'm only, I'm only 18. It's, it's hard to know exactly what uh, to do, what, like what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, the short future, I know I'm not going to go back to U of T. Um, even once all the mandates are done, whatnot, U of T has lost my respect. Um, in my mind, it's not a prestigious institution. You know, they, they don't encourage any learning or thought, critical thought. Like, what's really the point of paying all that money to go there to be indoctrinated? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so uh, I didn't apply for next year. Uh, for any school next year because I think it's safe. I don't know if any of the mandates will be lifted by next year. Um, I'll still be involved with CSUNT because um, right, taking action right now will affect mm -hmm. things down the road. Uh, so hopefully in the future I can, I can plan things out properly and, and see what to, what to do. I'll be, I'll be working probably full-time get a job somewhere somewhere that accept, accepts me as a, with a no, no vax pass, right? Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, so you're just planning to go to work and kind of delay your career until uh, we resolve all of this and we finally break down the system. Yeah, there's, there's no rush really to get my get a degree right now. I mean, obviously I don't want to push everything off, um, but I don't see any like short term going to school. Like it's, it's not really the thing I, that's realistic right now. Um, right. And like so. you mentioned, uh, U of T is just a name for prestige because w if it was such a highly regarded, qualified university, they mm. would have followed up with their mission and they would have promoted free speech. They would have promoted uh, flourish, flourishing of ideas and, and new uh, structures. But they are the ones who are leading the charge in all of this and they're the ones yeah. who are setting the example for all the other universities to discriminate and of course that's something we don't endorse and clearly you don't either because yeah. you've lost all respect and you the the institution has lost all its prestige for doing that and I hope others pick up on the truth and they start discrediting institutions like that that continue to do these things. They continue to violate their policies and mm -hmm. their mission statements. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we finally discredit those institutions. So they, they go down uh, in the ground and they have to be reborn and remade and reestablished to what they used to be. I mean, what do you see as the future of universities, let's say, 10 years from now and in a decade, what, what they're going to look like? and what they're going to be because yeah. at the moment what I'm seeing is the university lost its purpose now the university is a place of business and indoctrination it is promotion of government narratives yeah. that are uh, violating human rights and that's what they're used for at the moment they're no longer a place of free speech they're no longer a place of uh, science and research it's just a business it's yeah basically you pay your money to go there to fall in line right yeah. and just uh yeah like there's there's no hope for yeah critical thought or free speech at the universities at the moment um, yeah and and really the the sad part about it is most people go there just to get a paper yeah that doesn't really mean much for them it's not like they you know they learned a lot of new things or they learned a trade or anything a lot of people just go in because oh everybody does it and i need a paper to show that i did i did this right it's kind of a common thing to do yeah just just go to university get the paper to get a a job right to get a higher qualified job but yeah. did you learn did you get anything out of it and that's what universities are missing and do you think that is something that will be restored in the near future? Well, I hope so. I, I, I don't know. Um, the thing about Canada nowadays, uh, the world, right? I think you, talk, you touched on it earlier, but it's, it's all kind of in the last few years, you notice it's all kind of crumbled away. Um, like back before, I don't know, Trudeau was first elected, no one really, I don't know, you didn't, like, most people didn't really care too much about mm -hmm. politics and whatnot. But then Trudeau got elected, the Trump came around and then the, the media really like, you really noticed it, how the world kind of just plummeted. Mm. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I hope that things can be yeah, crumbled down, 
and then brought back up to what they they should be, right? What they what they used to be. Yeah, um, because uh, I mean, in order for things to get back to uh, the way we want them to, things have to crush. Things have to go down and burn, because those systems are not working, and we need those who are in charge to admit that they're wrong, to admit mm -hmm. their guilt in promoting these ideas and uh, creating so much suffering in people. So many uh, businesses have been lost. So many livelihoods have been lost. Yeah. For what? For nothing. And yeah. there, there was really no real threat of, uh, of, of, of health and safety in terms of the public perspective. So they've destroyed so many lives, so yeah. many businesses, so many people lost their jobs. Uh, you lost your career that you're working towards. I lost my career. I cannot go study and become a doctor. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, very uh, useful and productive and hardworking individuals who are just pushed out of society. And now because we cannot contribute yeah. in the ways that we should be. Yeah. Uh, and I think they, they should publicly come out, apologize for all these things, and they should admit, this is wrong. What we did was wrong and uh, we're going to fix it in the future and i don't know then i'll think mm -hmm. about it and i'll think maybe we can accept that but i i doubt because so many people have already lost trust in the government people lost trust in elections people lost trust in institutions and they lost trust in the media because they yeah. complete they always report lies they always report uh, false narratives and they're always trying to cover their ass by changing things on a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. And how can you trust somebody who always changes their mind and doesn't follow up with what they say? Well, the science changes, right? Um, but that's the thing, yeah. It, it's so blatantly obvious nowadays, well, at least for us like-minded individuals who can think for yeah. themselves, that yeah, like, they, like we really have lost so much trust in institutions and all that. And by, like, it, it's not a bad thing necessarily to trust the medical professionals, right? You want to be, you want to be able to trust them um, and because the average person doesn't know what they're talking about for the majority of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to trust them, and you want to you want to be able to trust what they're advising you to do. But once they start pushing so hard, mandating it like this, when just like a simple I don't know, not a Google search, but a DuckDuckGo search or something, um, will show you that I don't know some other studies, some other numbers, something that they're not showing you. Everything's being censored. I don't know. Joe Rogan's a great like source of, uh, I don't know, yeah, different information, right? Um, but yeah, you can, you can open yeah. your mind with it, right? And I mean, like, and that seems like the, the turning point is that a lot of these uh, platforms like mainstream media where you mm -hmm. just turn on CP24 or CBC or CTV, they continuously say the exact same words. And it's yeah. just, it's scary to see it that way. But it's almost like they're programmed to say these exact things because they elicit a certain response. Yeah. And a lot of people have lost trust. They've lost because they know that these things are reported in favor of the narrative or whoever's in authority. And now it seems like the turning point is that a lot of people are switching to things like podcasts, like we're doing yeah. right here, yeah. right now, because they can get the live story. And, thing, and just like you mentioned with Joe Rogan bringing on the doctors on the mm -hmm. podcast, it's like they are the most qualified people you could ever speak to about vaccines and about yeah. the mandates. Although, and, and that's why a lot of people have listened to it. And that's yeah. why a lot of people have gathered, you know, so much skepticism now. Yeah. Because those are, those people could be trusted. They're losing everything to tell you the truth. Whereas somebody else like the mainstream media, the government have incentives to say those They've things. They've got everything to, yeah, every, the people that speak out against it, they have everything to lose. Right, but then yeah, the mainstream media, uh, the chief medical officers, whatever, they have everything to gain. Right, it's it's all about money and power and big whatnot, conflict right? of interest. Happening. Big conflict of interest, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and then Joe Rogan, he brings those people on, and they just have a discussion, right? Um, he doesn't necessarily condone everything they say, whatnot, but then he's given so much flack for just giving them a platform, yeah. even though they are. Like Robert Malone, he's the he's got all the patents for the mRNA technology, whatnot. But then he's, it's like misinformation, right? Like dangerous misinformation. Um, even though it's just a different side of the story. Yeah. Right. That's right. So, well, thank you for the conversation. I, that was uh, a lot of fun. It's great to hear perspective from a first year university student yeah. who's gone through this and. Uh, who's gone through things like exemptions and now being investigated for <laughs> being a danger to the public. So 
I mean, well, thank you for uh, joining CSANT and getting uh, more involved and contributing to this cause because we have a lot of work to do and uh, we'll continue doing what we do and continue to grow. For sure. And yeah. if you agree with uh, what we're doing and you would like to contribute, visit csun.ca and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Fantastic. Thank <music> you.